Okay, here we are, NAM 2012. We're at the Isotope booth, and we're here with Brett, and we're going to talk a little bit about one of their new products. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have used Ozone before. Uh, if you haven't, uh, you should. And they've got a new version out, 5. They've got uh, two flavors of it uh, uh, as well. They've got the advanced version, which we're looking at here. So I'm going to let Brett uh, take over here and talk a little bit about uh, some of the new features in Ozone. Well, like Kevin said, I know a lot of you are familiar with Ozone, and especially Ozone 4, but we've taken a lot of uh, look at Ozone 4 and made a lot of improvements to Ozone 5 to make the module a lot easier to use and a lot better sounding. I'd say the first thing is we've looked at the workflow and tried to make overall workflows a lot easier in Ozone 5. We've tried to make as many things as we can forward facing so you don't have to dig through features to get the exact sound you want. Everything you need is right in front of you and easily accessible. And so you see here like in the EQ module, we have a more graphical view here that, where you can sort of drag and move the nodes, easy to interact with. Then we also have a more precise mode where you can see all the individual nodes and you can enter the exact values you're looking for. We added a few different filter shapes in Ozone 5, so we've always had like, you know, for example, the low shelf, but now we've added, in addition, a sort of vintage low shelf. And basically what this does is, is it behaves a bit like a Poltec filter. So you'll see, you get a complementary frequency dip, so you can raise the bass, and then around 500, Hertz, you get a sort of complementary frequency tip that sort of scoops out a little bit of that honk that would come with that. Additionally, we have like a lot of brick wall filters. So for like a high pass filter, we have like the resonant filter, which you see a lot, but we've added filters like a, a flat filter, which here you don't get the resonance, and also an absolute brick wall. So you get a very sharp signal cut, but without any of the sort of resonance that you usually get with these type of filters. Uh, we've added some workflow improvements. So if you remember from Ozone 4, we always had the sort of alt solo mode. So you can sort of hear different frequencies. It's sort of an easy way to find the exact frequency you're looking for. But now you can simply double click and insert a node on that frequency. So that makes it sort of simple to, once you find a frequency you're looking to boost or attenuate, automatically insert a node at that frequency. We've completely rehauled the reverb module, and now what we're doing is using samples of real rooms, so we're using convolution technology, but matching that with some algorithmic technology, which is a bit more efficient on the CPU, but you're still getting those rich, warm room tones, but you're getting a little bit more control of the late reflections. So you're able to sort of control the early reflections, which are sort of the real room tones, but then add these sort of like low and high decays, which is more the algorithmic technology. And so with those two together, you get quite a good full, rich, warm room tone. And then we also have the sort of band filters to affect what frequencies are being sent to the reverb module. And in most modules now, we offer multiple different displays, different views. We call these spectrum window views. So in the reverb module here, this shows the character of an individual room. So this is the plate mode. This is the theater mode. And then as we change these settings, we'll see this updated in real time. So we can get an idea of sort of the character of the reverb that we're putting on the signal. The dy dynamic module, we've done a lot of uh, refining to. One of the biggest things we've done is add a show all bands mode. So now you can see oh, very cool. all your yeah. dynamic bands in one window. So it makes it really easy to sort of, you can link all your bands, make some rough adjustments across the board, across all your cross bands, across And then once you get the levels roughly where you want them to be, you can unlink them, then go into the individual bands and tweak them. That's very nice. We've added knee control, so now you can have variable knee between soft and hard. We've added different ways of detection circuits, so in addition to peak and RMS, we also have true envelope detection. And this is an example of one of our new spectrum window views, and what this shows is gain reduction over time. So you're able to see in each band how your signal is being attenuated. So it shows you sort of envelope of how gain reduction is taking place. And this can help you when you're setting your attack and your release and just looking at the overall envelope of the signal. We've added a few new modes to the harmonic exciter. 
we've refined the DSP in all the modes. We've also added the new triode and du tri dual triode modes, which sort of imitate the behavior of like a tube circuit and the dynamics effects that sort of also come with that. And like with this mode, we've added this sort of spectrum view that shows how the signal is being excited. So this you can see where the harmonics are appearing in the signal. So you can see what you're introducing to the signal. Also in Ozone 4, the harmonic exciter introduced a lot of gain to the signal. In Ozone 5, we've refined a lot of the DSP to make it sort of gain neutral. So you're not really adding any gain, you're just changing the overall color of the sound. In the stereo imaging module, we've added a stereoized feature. And basically what this does is allow you to add stereo width to a mono or narrow signal without getting the sort of comb filtering effects that usually come with this sort of offset and this sort of delay. So basically it sort of looks at the signal and combats the sort of comb combing effects, but it still allows you to get a sort of wide stereo signal. And then we've added views, like stereo whip views, so you can see the stereo width of the signal in each band. Now, you know, I, I, I know you guys probably know this happens. I don't know if you, you endorse it or not. But usually people see Ozone 5 in your master channel. Yeah. But and I know you do have another piece of software that actually is for you know the mix channel. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of people I know actually use because of the quality of the instruments. Sure. Uh, are using them in the mix channel. Are you guys endorsing that, or is that just you know that's just something people um, do, or do you guys do you know that kind of stuff is is going on? Sure. I mean we know it's going on, and uh, I mean we don't tell people how to use our products. You know, basically we just try and make the best product we can. Right. And you know we want the customers to use it however it works best for them. Uh, one of the things we've added with Ozone Five Advance is we now have module components. So. For example, you could load just the limiter, or just the EQ, or if you have a favorite module, then not only does that decrease the uh, CPU overall because you're not loading up all the modules, but you can just sort of pick and choose which modules you want, and it simplifies the process as well. So kind of subtly, you guys, you know that, that people want to use them individually. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we're just trying to give added features to advanced users and let them use the modules they want, how they want to use them. Right, right. Okay, well, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Looks good, Ozone 5 from Isotope, and this is NAMP 2012. Thank you.